Mr. Robert Simmons, how are you, sir? I am in Amman, Jordan, and they are watching your YouTube videos over here in Amman, Jordan, at the Harley Davidson. Tell me your name. Cheers. I'm Ahmed from Amman, Jordan, and uh, honestly, we've been watching your videos since we actually moved to the new shop, and it's something impressive, something impressive. Good, good. All right, man, I'll talk to you a little later. Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel, guys. Always a pleasure to have you guys here with me. You know this by now, right? I mean, how could you not know this by now? The only way you can possibly not know this by now is if you're watching this channel for the first time. And if that's you, welcome, All right? Welcome to Preloader Nation. And guys, I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and join us on this journey because you're gonna be joining a group of motorcycle riders that are just phenomenal, phenomenal. And the beauty is I'm not just talking about the skill level of the motorcycle riders because a lot of us are still learning this craft of slow speed motorcycle operation, but I'm talking about the caliber of people that are preloaders and VI preloaders. And if that's something you wanna be a part of, positivity, no judgment, no arrogance, in each one teach one environment, this is the place for you. If you want to go on a Facebook page and not have to worry about trolls and negativity and stupid crap like that, that's my Facebook group, Preload and Keep It Loaded. All right, everything about me and anything associated with me has to be positive. All right, I don't have any time or energy for anything negative. All right, so just to get that out. But I'm telling you about all of this stuff. You don't even know who I am. My name's Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant. I did a wonderful 22 year career with the NYPD. 15 of those years were spent with the elite NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle unit. The name of this great channel I've been talking to you guys about is called Robert Simmons Paying It Forward. And on this channel, I share my knowledge, experience, and training that I received from the elite NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle unit with you guys, the motorcycle riding community. And I primarily focus on slow speed 
motorcycle operation. What is that? That's riding these machines. And when I say these machines, let me make this clear. I'm not just referring to Harley Davidson's or bagger type motorcycles, period. I'm referring to anything on two wheels with a motor. That's what I'm referring to. Okay. I focus on speed ranges between one and 10 miles per hour because in that speed range, that's where most motorcycle riders are very uncomfortable riding their motorcycles. Why is that? Because in that speed range, you have to be the boss of your motorcycle, meaning you have to be in 100% control of your motorcycle. And that's why I focus on that because that is a huge part of slow speed motorcycle operation. I wanna raise your confidence level so that you feel comfortable making right turns, left turns, and U-turns. I wanna get rid of this perception that if you ride your motorcycle as it was designed to be written at slow speeds, making U-turns, I'm not even talking about excessive stuff like dragging the floorboards, 18 foot U-turns and stuff like that. But just making a 24 foot U-turn, being able to ride slow with both your feet on the board. I wanna get rid of the perception that that's like a stunt like, whoa, wow, that guy made a U-turn. If you think about that, it's ridiculous, right? We're amazed that somebody can make a U-turn on a motorcycle. And that's 98% of the motorcycle riding community. Now, I could, you know, I didn't just take that number and pull it out of my butt. It might not be exact. I mean, it might be more, right? I mean, you guys know, you see. It's a, it, and that's why it raises so many eyebrows when you see someone do it, because it's so rare. But I'm trying to reverse that, because it's gonna make us enjoy our motorcycles way more, guys. Right now, you're probably only enjoying 60, 70%. But there's another percentage out there I want you guys to take advantage of. But that's secondary, your enjoyment, that is. The main thing is it's gonna make you a safer rider, all right? It gives you more options out there while you're riding. Remember, when stuff doesn't go as planned, your next course of action is limited to your skill level. So if your skill level is one, you only have a one range of, oh crap, what am I gonna do? And that's most people out there, all right? So we need to reverse that, and that's what I'm doing on this channel, okay? Um, I'm out here in Pula, Georgia, for you guys that don't know. I have practice sessions. Actually, I have them right here in this parking lot, as well as private lessons. And if that's something that you guys are interested in, go to my website right here, all right? And it'll give you all the information on that if you're interested in practice sessions. There's a uh, you can click on where it says practice information. And if you're interested in private lessons, click on where it says private lessons. All right, guys, April 2nd. April 2nd is this week, all right? It's coming up within a week. And um, I'm very excited about it, okay? As I said before, I'm just gonna pray for good weather. All right, this is the Preloader Spring Global Group Ride. And I'm excited about this because yes, I'm hosting a ride from this parking lot. Kickstands up at 10 a.m. on April 2nd. And the beauty of this is, I know that there are people coming here to ride with me, but if you're unable to ride with me, that's why it's a global ride. You can ride with me wherever you are in the world, okay? April 2nd, 10 o'clock, or whatever time you can do it, you go out, do a ride, okay? It doesn't have to be anything long or extravagant. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch of people. It could be you and one other person. It could be just you, all right? Take a picture of yourself, take a video of, your, of yourself, two minutes or less, or your group of people, all right? 1080p or more, not less, because less than 1080p is too grainy. More than 1080p, more difficult for you to send to me. But send that to me, whether it's pictures or video, and I'm going to put that in a video, all right? So that video that I put out for the Global Group Ride, wherever you are in the world, you send me that video, you're going to be a part of that video. And I'm very, very excited about that, guys. Very excited about that. The practice sessions, the travel practice sessions that I have coming up in May, May 14th in New Jersey, May 15th in Maryland, okay? Those reservations for that are full at this point. There is a reserve list as well. If you wanna be on that reserve list, send me an email, all right? Um, but whether you can participate or not, I highly, highly encourage you, come on out, all right? Because I wanna, of course, I always wanna meet you guys and shake your hands. But you can still benefit from watching people do certain things and we can meet other preloaders and VR preloaders. All right, so I'm excited about that too. Again, just praying for good weather. I'll have a location for you guys for the Maryland and New Jersey practice sessions uh, the first week of April. All right, I'll have a location for you. All right, just, I just want to make sure it's locked in 
before I throw it out there. Okay, guys? All right, guys, so today is practice session number 40. It's a whole number today, right? 40, 40, 40. And I'm excited about this practice session. And the reason I'm excited about this practice session is I have three, I'm sorry, I have two VI preloaders and one preloader today. And all of them are local. This is probably the first time this has happened. And it, it drives me insane when I have people coming here from long distances. I started to uh, list them, but no reason. Just say long distances. And people right in my backyard are not taking advantage of what's going on out here. But that's starting to change, it looks like. Um, and I'm excited about that. I'm not saying this is the first time that people locally came to a practice session, but it's the first time that everybody at the practice session, they're all local. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that. When they get here, you know how we do it, guys. We're going to talk to them, find out who they are, where they're from, how long they've been riding, how long they've been practicing. All right, I've added that question because that question to me is way more important than how long they've been riding and how they rate themselves on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best. All right? All right, well, before I do anything else, practice session number 39, there were 30 push-ups left out here. Not by more than one person either, all by the same person. I never give their names. I just do the push-ups for them. All right. I'm gonna start putting my gloves on when I do this. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine, hold it. Yep. All right, you know who you are. All right, guys, let's do it. All right, guys, we're gonna get started here. And like I told you guys, this is a very, to me at least, a very special practice session. Again, this is practice session number 40, 40. Why is this special for me? You see these guys? These guys are all local, local. How many times I've been telling you guys, people email me all the time. Oh my God, I wish I was close to you. If I was close, I'd be there every time you do it. But I got people right in my own backyard that don't take advantage of this. Well now, that's what's going on today. And I'm not saying that people that are local never come, but this is the first time that the whole practice session are local people. So we're going to talk to this guy first. What's your name, sir? Finesse. Finesse. And you guys know, I said before, the way he says his name, <laughs> that's how he should be named. Yeah, Finesse. Yeah. Finesse. I changed it up this time. Where are you from, Finesse? <laughs> Originally from Texas, but I live out in uh, Guyton, here in Savannah. How long have you been riding the motorcycle? Uh, off and on since about mm, 2002. Now, what I've added to my questions is actually more important to me than that question. And that is, how long have you been practicing slow speed riding? Uh, what is it? I came out here two weeks ago? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Two weeks. Okay, good. Good. And listen, I have no problem because I dealt with that a lot in Daytona. A lot of people either told me zero for that question, never practice, or... So once I started watching your videos, I started practicing because that's what this is all about. Okay, what are you riding today? Uh, 21 Indian Challenger. Okay, and here's his 21 Indian Challenger. Do me a favor. And I know that the camera never does it any justice, but I know you just installed these tap performance slip-ons. You sent me a picture of it. You were yes, all sir. giddy. Exclamation points everywhere. Yep. Let me hear it. All right. Just slip-ons. That's all he's got. Thank you. I'm a jackass. I know better. You don't squat behind tap performance pipes. <laughs> I squatted behind that. All right, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed skills? Uh, three. Three. All right, excellent. Please pass the mic to Stacy. Bike looks good, man. Bike looks good. Thank you, thank you. Here, I, I did it again. Pass the mic to Stacy. What's your name, dear? <laughs> I do it all the time. Where are you from, Stacy? Um, originally from the Bahamas, but uh -huh. I live Whoa. in Effingham County now. Okay, very good, very good. And how long have you been riding the motorcycle? Um, 20 plus years. How long have you been practicing slow speed riding? This will be the first practice. Okay, very good, very good. What are you riding today? I am riding a 2021 Indian Roadmaster. 
Don't you don't you work at an Indian dealership? As a matter of fact, I do. Which Indian dealership is that? Indian Motorcycles Savannah. Ah, shout out to Indian Motorcycle of Savannah. That's where I bought my 2018 Chieftain Limited, blue in color. All right, you guys that don't know, yes, that's what I rode originally. I said I wasn't gonna, I had no interest in buying a motorcycle when I first moved to Savannah. Working with my partner, he kept talking about motorcycles. He gave me the itch and he cost me some money. And, <laughs> and that's, that's basically what's going on. Now I'm just talking to Stacy about the fact that right here on her motorcycle, it's not on now, but this is where it shows her what gear she's in, whether her clutch is pulled in or not. And not only does it show her that, but the font is about that big. <laughs> so you can see it. Where on our Hollies, it's about that big. So, you know, or whatever. Okay, beautiful bike. How many miles on? How long you had it? Um, about 3,000 miles. I've had it uh, less than a year. Okay. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed skills? Mm, 1. 1. Very good. All right. Please pass the mic. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice Thank to you, meet man. you. <laughs> Thanks. I almost did it. What's your name? <laughs> Jeff. I almost said Jeff. What's your name? <laughs> Where are you from, Jeff? I'm going to stop asking people their name until I do this. Here in Savannah. Beautiful. How long have you been riding a motorcycle? I don't know. Since I was 19. How long have you been practicing slow speed riding? Since November. Beautiful. Beautiful. What are you riding today? 2020 Road Glide Limited. Okay, we're going to take a look at your bike. I'm not going to squat behind it, but I am going to ask you to start it. Now, I did a... I put Jeff's bike... I met Jeff yesterday at Savannah Holly Davidson, and I put that video that I did with Jeff on Instagram and on my Facebook group, Preload and Keep It Loaded. And if you wanted to know why I call him the bandit, well, there you go. He's got the symbol from the Trans Am on the front. Jeff, tell us about that. What, what's, was, it, what, was that on there when you bought it? It was not. Uh, when I bought it, it had gold rims, and the bar and shields were painted gold, and they, they called it the Trans Ham Edition. Okay. Go ahead, let's hear it. I'm gonna get back here. Cause this, uh, this sounds good. He's got a, what do you got a, a 472 or something like that, Cam? Zippers? I think it's 468, I'm not really sure of the numbers. I don't know what the hell the numbers mean Red anyway, shift, so it, yeah. it doesn't matter. And it's throaty, man, it is throaty. Oh, I'll take it. Okay. It is nice, very nice. All right, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed skills? I'd say a five. Five is good, and I know that you tell me you practice quite often, is that Every correct? Day. Every yeah. Day. And Jeff said, I, I met Jeff and I said, wait a minute, you live here, how come you've never been out here? Man of his word, he said, you know what? If it's tomorrow, he said, when's the next practice session? I said, tomorrow morning. He said, okay, I'm there. I'm there. I'll fill out the whole homeless. He became a VI preloader yesterday, so I appreciate you, Jeff. Awesome. Pass the mic, man. Last but certainly not least, what's your name, sir? Justin. Justin, where are you from? Rinkin, Georgia. Are you from Savannah? Originally. Very rare. Nobody here is from here. That is correct. <laughs> where you say you're from? I'm from Rinkin. Oh, okay. Originally Warner Robins. Okay. How long have you been riding the motorcycle? Uh, probably less than two years in total. How long have you been practicing slow speed? Since the week before last when I found you on YouTube. Beautiful. Very good. What are you riding today? 2009 Heritage Softail. All right. And you told me that this motorcycle was... You're, yes. the, you're the operator now. Yep. Passed down from my father-in-law to my wife, and I'm the designated driver. Her name's Pearl. Very good. Very good. And she does not like cranking when she's hot. <laughs> okay. All right. Now on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed skills? We'll go. With, we'll start with the two. Two. Okay. Since it's week two. Very good. Very good. <laughs> All right. Nice to meet you, man. You as well. All right, guys. One through nine, plus a bonus, plus something extra. All right, guys. Welcome to practice session number forty. We're here to learn. We're here to have fun. Zero pressure here. And what I mean by that is, is anybody here nervous? You're nervous. Okay. Um. Nothing to be nervous about because you're not going to do anything. Well, I started to say you're not going to do anything that you don't want to do, that you don't feel comfortable doing. Yes, there might be some things that make you feel a little uneasy, but there's no pressure. So I do want you to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit, but nothing extreme because, again, like you said, this is day one. So we have, I'm not going anywhere under, you know, for what I can control. So uh, just keep that in mind. 
all right? And I also mean we're doing nine exercises out here. If we get to exercise number four and you go, that's the furthest I'm going to go, you can continue to do one through four while we do the rest. You know, totally up to you, okay? Um, you guys know there's a 10 push-up penalty for grabbing your front brake, all right? You really don't even need to touch it out here today. Slow-speed motorcycle operating skills do not require you. You know, I was on the highway yesterday in traffic on 16, and just to see, because I never use it going slow, I said, let me just ride slow and use my front brake. And even when I'm using it as gentle as I can at that slow speed, I feel it. It's too much power at slow speed, right? So if it's too much power when you're going straight, imagine if you're trying to turn. And think about this. The turn preload and keep it loaded. I'm referring to the throttle. While you're moving slow, especially if you're getting ready to do something where you're, you're leaning the motorcycle, keep that throttle loaded. Now, if you need to apply some brake, how are you going to keep it loaded and apply the front brake at the same time? So, like I say, even in the design, it's showing you that's not how you're supposed to ride the motorcycle. Now, every time I use my rear brake, oh my God, of course, that's what I always use, but it felt so much better. Front brake, unsteady. And that's why most motorcycle riders hate the way it feels when they're riding slow. Because they're not touching that rear brake, they're using the front brake, and it makes you feel out of control. And the majority of motorcycle riders, between 1 and 10 miles per hour, they're really not in control of the motorcycle, and that's why they don't like that. Nobody likes to feel not in control, okay? So, um, what we're going to be going over today, uh, oh, I'm sorry, if you see me do this, that just means shut your engine off, okay? What we're going to be going over today, 1 through 9, like I said, and a bonus, and a surprise, basically what that is, I didn't know if Finesse was coming, so I don't have a lane for him, but we'll hook him up. <laughs> that's the slow race, all right? So, I, I, I added that last practice session. To me, that's way better than me getting on this sidewalk and trying to go slow because people were getting slick. They were slick. I'm all the way up here. They're still in the parking lot. You're like, you know, so at least here, everybody starts at the same time. Remember, I always say it's nothing out here is competitive based. It's just out of fun. Okay. All right. Exercise number one is starting and stopping. Something I didn't usually, I didn't do it first, but I, because I assumed everybody knew how to do it properly, but they don't because again, we're in that realm of one to 10 miles per hour. So it's important that we know what we're doing as far as mechanically, not mechanically, physically on the motorcycle, but it's also important that we understand how these machines work. And when you put those two things together, it makes this so much easier, all right? So starting and stopping is gonna be exercise number one, and then the slow ride is ex exercise number two. And I say those things together because they go together. And in my opinion, fundamentally, those are the most important exercises for everything we do on our motorcycle, because you have to do it. You have to start, you have to stop, and you're gonna have to ride your motorcycle between one and 10 miles per hour several times. Today, for instance, when we do exercise number three, which are these two cones right here, if uh, Finesse is right here, and I say, okay, you're next, I don't care if he's going to my camera, we don't duck walk our motorcycles, okay? So the steps I'm gonna go over with you, that's what we're gonna do all the time today. Every time you move, you're gonna do the same steps. This is how we build muscle memory. So when you get out there, you don't have to think about it, all right? And if you have bad habits, this is how we overcome them. What's always step number one in everything we do on our motorcycle? Finesse. Stacy, he took too long. Jeff. Justin. First gear. That's right. Make sure your motorcycle's in first gear. That's always step number one. Now, people on Harleys, you'll see them stop, and then you'll see They'll stop with their rear brake, and then they'll put that foot down, and then they'll see them do this. That's to making sure the motorcycle's in first gear. If you ride an Indian, you don't have to do that. You can just look and see it, right? <laughs> All right. That's always step number one. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. Step number two. Cover the rear brake. Cover the rear brake. That's always step number two because covering the rear brake is how you have control of the motorcycle. A lot of the times with motorcycle riders, especially when they first pull off, if they're pulling off and it's a green light and nothing's in front of them, that's no problem with that. They love that. Just hit the throttle and the motorcycle is going to take over. But if they have to take off and go slow, sometimes they give too much power and then they grab that front brake. Covering the rear brake doesn't mean you're applying pressure, but if you need it, your foot's there. Remember, everything we do on a motorcycle is subtle. If you do something herky-jerky, the motorcycle is going to react herky-jerky. So by already having your foot on the rear brake, when you need it, you can just apply gentle pressure. If you try to go at it, you're probably going to stab at it, okay? Okay, so those are the first two steps. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. 
cover the rear brake. What's step number three? Preload and keep it loaded. And keep it loaded. And keep it loaded. So, yeah, I'm admiring the way your motorcycles sound. The beauty about that is I need you to pay attention to that sound today. All right? Listen to your throttle because a lot of times people preload. And then as soon as they get ready to go to the next step, their brain is thinking about the next step. They let the preload out when that's when it's most important, because once you start to make a turn, you might not have a big deal if your preload's low and you're going straight. But if you go to make a turn or your handlebars are turned, that's when it matters. OK, so listen to your throttles today. If you don't and I, sometimes you're not concentrating on it, I'll let you know. You should never hear your engine sound like this. <clears throat> it shouldn't be like a heartbeat. If you hear at any level, gong, 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 it's, you're like one step away from stalling. It should be a steady. Mm. Now, everybody's motorcycle is different. Mine, I'm about 2,000. But if I'm getting ready to do a lean where I know it's, I'm going to lean it all the way over at slow speeds, I might get it close to three. It just makes me feel better to hear my RPMs higher. You're not going to damage your motorcycle. You're doing it in short spurts. Now, when we're doing exercise number two, the slow ride, yeah, you don't need to have it at 2,500 the whole time. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. Any questions? All right, exercise number one, I want you guys to, you're gonna go down there. I'm gonna be down here. Yeah, there's some military stuff going on. All right. Um, you're gonna ride toward me, get up to second gear, and then as you approach me, downshift, front brake, because again, I tell people all the time, I don't use my rear brake unless I'm going 10 miles per hour or less. But some people were misconceived, and they were going 25 miles per hour, rear brake. Locking it up. No. Front brake, front brake, front brake. Right before you stop. I'm not going to give you a number. You transition from the front to the rear. That's going to allow you to come to a nice smooth stop. Left foot down. Or once you stop, you can put both feet down. I say left foot down because I keep covering the rear brake. And it's also a motor officer thing. It looks better if all of us are stopped and we're the same exact way. I'm a big uniformity type of guy. It's just, it is what it is. Then, when it's time for you guys to take off, preload, keep it loaded, covering the rear brake, and take off. Okay? Nice and easy. Everything we do is nice and easy. Any questions? We, should, we may only have to do it once. If we got to do it more than once, or if I tell you to do it again, just do it again. All right. Stacy, you want to go first on everything today? Sure. All right. Ladies first. All right, guys. Exercise number one. Stacy, that U-turn looks really good. Really good. Alright, very good. So, the habit that I'm going to have to break is I'm a, I'm a both brake user. So am I. All the time. So am I. So. But, obviously we're not going to do that out here. Right. Okay, and when you pulled up, you still had this pulled. You still had your, you were still on the front brake when you pulled up. So that's 10 push-ups. Let's do it again. So do I do push-ups now? No, no. Later. Okay. We'll do this later. Okay. But I, I, so we'll maybe accumulate 100 and have to do them all at one time. No, as soon as we finish this exercise, if you want to do them, you can do them. Okay. <laughs> I like Stacy because already she's accountable. She's like, you want me to do them now? Smooth as butter. You can park, man. Oh, oh, cover that rear brake before you take off. Just cover it. There we go. Reload. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you why I told him to cover it. I'll tell you later. Beautiful. You can park. Preload's good. Okay, here comes Justin. From here, it looks like Justin's head is down. All right, good. Reload, reload, reload. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. So he stopped and then he took off with his foot off of the rear brake. And then the preload is too low. 
Good. Okay, better. All right. Preload. Keep it loaded and you can park. Okay, now she started with her feet off of the brake and then let her foot go out like this as she went back. We got to trust and believe. That sun's already working its, working its wonders. All right, good. Make sure you keep that brake covered. When you take off, make sure you keep that brake covered. Okay. And give me a little bit more preload. Okay. All right, then you can park. Good. All right, that's better. All right, we'll talk about it now. All right, guys, good job. Couple of things. One, no, we're not there yet, but Stacy, excellent job on that U-turn. That's one. Um, two, remember, I want you guys to do the same thing the same way every time you do it. So Justin, Stacy, and Finesse at one point. When you guys stopped here, as soon as you stopped, you took your foot off the rear brake, and that's fine. Sometimes you just want to whatever. But when it was time for you to take off, you did it with your foot off of the rear brake. As a matter of fact, Stacy, you took your foot off. Your foot was on the ground, and when you took off, you actually let your foot go back like this. Remember, and that's got nothing to do with her feeling like she's going to fall. So again, that could just be a habit or whatever. But as soon as your motorcycle starts to move, your feet should be on the board. A, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, lessen the odds on you being injured in any way. But two... It's a trust and believe thing too. Usually people will keep their feet out because they don't feel easy until the motorcycle takes over and then they can feel easy and put their feet up. As soon as it starts to move, feet up, all right? That's where um, exercise number one and two come into play. That's why I say if you move from here to here, you do it the same way. Because if you don't feel comfortable going slow from here to there, your feet, that's why you see people keep their feet out the whole time they're doing it because they're going so slow. But remember, all we need to keep, this is what I mean when I say, when you understand how these machines work, it helps. What keeps this motorcycle upright at slow speed, Stacy? Momentum. No. Momentum is what people usually ref, um, depend on because momentum requires speed. But when you're going slow, power to the rear wheel is the only thing that keeps your motorcycle up. Now, realize I said power, not speed. Speed is not your friend out here. So when we do exercise number two, which we're about to do, if you hear me saying, slow down, throttle, slow down, throttle, I'm not telling you to go faster. I'm telling you to raise your RPMs because it's too low. I'm worried about you stalling out. So with that being said, you guys see sometimes, even when I'm doing the slow ride, I can actually bring the motorcycle to a stop and I'm not moving, right? And if I feel like I'm going to fall, what's always the answer for uh-oh out here? Power to the rear wheel. Go back to the friction zone. So we're already preloaded. You don't have to worry about that. So whenever I feel like the motorcycle is going to fall, I just go back into the friction zone a little bit. That alone, uh-oh, that alone is going to pick, it's going to stand the motorcycle up for that brief moment. And then I can pull the clutch back in, rear brake, until I feel like I'm going to fall again. And just keep doing that, all right? So it's important that we understand power is what we need, not speed. Okay, the rear brake and the power to your rear wheel, they actually work against one another. And that's what keeps your motorcycle up. Also keep in mind that you're, it's a gyroscopic machine. Your motorcycle is designed that when there's power to the rear wheel, it wants to stand up and it wants to go straight. That's why if you give it too much speed, making a turn is almost impossible. It straightens out your handlebars, right? But we're gonna get to that. All right, any questions? All right, next exercise, the slow ride. Again, one and two, they go together. This is an exercise that you can practice every time you ride your motorcycle approaching a red light. And that's why I love it, because you can always do it. Now, we're in a controlled environment, so you can go a little extra here. But if you're out in the street, you need to be in the confines of that one lane. You know, know the limitations of your skill. Don't get too crazy with it. I'm going to be walking aside, you guys. And all I want you to do is ride at my walking pace. Don't pass me. If you can do this exercise and keep your handlebars totally straight, you're going too fast. Remember, the goal here is to get you comfortable controlling your motorcycle going slow. Not with momentum, but with the friction zone, okay? All right, um, now there's, there's more than one way to do everything. So if you wanna stay in the friction zone the whole time and just use your rear brake to control your speed, you can do that. Because we're doing this in a short distance, not a big deal. If you wanna use momentum, like Stacy said, momentum comes into play because you can actually 
open up your clutch, give your, your motorcycle some speed, and then pull the clutch in. And then that's momentum right there. And, and it's when you start seeing your handlebars go like this, open your clutch a little bit, straighten out, pull it back in. So you don't even have to use the rear brake in that instance, okay? Again, you can do that. You can do one, the other, or combine them. Remember, being the boss of your motorcycle means knowing what to do and when to do it and how to do it. The situation is always going to dictate what you do, okay? All right, any questions? All right, I want you guys to go. This time I want you to go around. Eh, it doesn't matter. Go where you started before. I'm going to be standing right here. You're going to ride up to me and stop. That's just practicing exercise number one again. And then we're going to do the slow ride. Good, good, good. We're going to work on that. When he pulled off, he pulled off like very gingerly. His preload was high enough, but you also have to make sure you're in the friction zone enough. You need to feel the motorcycle moving. Very good. Foot came up as soon as the motorcycle started to move. All right, ready? Let's do it. Keep it loaded. You're good. Remember, if you feel all, go back into the friction zone. Keep it loaded. Head and eye, straight ahead. Very good. I was just about to tell you, get on that rear brake. Because that's what happened when he first started. He wasn't on the rear brake. It makes you feel so much better. Look at him. Because a little bit of pressure on that rear brake. Good job, man. You can pull. I mean, it makes a huge difference. Very good. Foot up as soon as he started to move. The bandit. Excellent. Ready? Let's do it. Good. Very good. See his head in the eye, straight ahead. Very good. Slow down, slow down. Keep it loaded. I know he said his camera's a little, you know, iffy at slow speeds. All right, you can park. Good job. Another 10. Go ahead. So I just need for you to go through that whole braking thing with me because I don't, I don't want to miss an opportunity today to do it right. Okay. So as I'm approaching my stop, mm -hmm. I'm, I can use both brakes, but as I get to the, almost to the end of it, I should be all rear brakes yes. and no front brakes. Yes. Okay. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk to you about that why too. Okay, you ready? Cover that rear brake. That's how you start all the time. All right, let's do it. Reload, reload. Good. Head and eye, straight ahead. See, rear, rear brake, rear brake, cover it, cover it. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Keep it loaded. Keep that throttle loaded. Keep the throttle loaded. You hear it low, you hear it click, click, click. Do it again, Stacy. So her throttle's low. We want to take care of that. Got to cover that rear brake. It gives you some control. I can see she feels a little uneasy going slow, but that's why we're here. We're going to work on it. All right, looking good. Remember, head and eye, straight ahead. Ready? Let's do it. Cover that rear brake. Reload, reload. Slow down, slow down. Good. Good. Keep it loaded. Good. Good. One more time. One more time, Justin. Nice. Okay. You ready? Remember, nice and easy on the rear brake. Okay, let's do it. Keep it loaded. Slow down, cover that rear brake. You're not on the rear brake. There you go. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. All right, you can park. Keep it loaded. You how low that throttle is? If you hit, look, 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 look. It's too low.
All right, let's do it. Good. Head and eye straight ahead. Very good. Much better, Justin. Much better. You can park. Stacy said, I want to go again. Excellent stop. All right. Let's do it again. Head and eye straight ahead. Keep it loaded. See? The throttle's too low. Right. So. You can hear your engines going. Look, 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 look. Let me see what your, what's your RPMs? Where the hell are the RPMs? Oh, right here. Okay, let me see, preloading. Not that high. Yeah, about right there. 2,000, a little over two. Yeah, that's how it should sound. Rear brake. Keep it loaded. Look at that, better already. One more time. All right, it's coming together, it's coming together. Her issue was low throttle. Low throttle and not covering the rear brake. Head and eyes. But see, this is why we wanna practice on that throttle. Because if, you, if it's low going straight, What's to make you think it's going to be different turning? Okay, good. Ready? Reload. Okay, let's do it. Uh, I let out the clutch. It happens. I, I the clutch yeah, too. it happens. All right, this is it. This is it. Reload. And keep it loaded. Reload. Good. Nice and Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Good. Good use of that rear brake. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Your RPMs are at 1,000. Too low. All right, you can park. All right, we're going to talk. All right. So, Stacy. Um, now, you guys heard it, and that's why I like that engine. And just the last time Stacy was going, I'm, I was walking and looking. Your RPMs were at 1,000. It's too low. Um, so, and another thing I noticed you're doing is, and uh, Justin was doing it too, you're starting off with your foot not on the rear brake. Um, remember, we're gonna do the same thing the same way all the time. That's how we're gonna get it into your muscle memory. Starting off that way, that's why you guys started off a little too fast, all right? But the second and third time that you came through Justin, like Justin at first he had his foot on the brake, off the brake, and every time you would go to the brake, your motorcycle would do that. That's why we cover it. Remember, just covering your brake doesn't mean you're applying pressure. You have to actually apply pressure for the brake to... Everybody's motorcycle is different. The other thing is, step number three is preload and keep it loaded. Step number four, clutch right before the sweet spot. Step number five, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. Step number three is important because you should have the motorcycle already at about 2,000 before you even start moving. What you were doing, Stacy, is you're starting to move at 1,000. So already it's too low and that's why it would stall. And sometimes you would let the clutch out too much. That's not gonna happen if you have more preload, all right? So again, let's listen to the engine. If you need to look down at the tachometer to see what the number is, to associate it with the sound, I'm saying. I don't need you looking at that anymore after that. I just need you to listen to the engine, okay? All right, it's, it's, just, it's so important that we cover that, that rear brake and keep it loaded. Because when I saw Stacy make a U-turn down here, again, Stacy stalls out right here, no big deal, just put her feet down. But if your handlebars are turned, or if you're making a U-turn and that happens, your bike's gonna fall, all right? That's why we have to do the same thing the same way all the time, because that way you won't have to worry about it when you're in that situation, because it's the way you do it all the time, okay? All right, any questions? All right, now it's gonna get interesting. Let me get my bike. Because I know I'm sorry, exercise number three, which is what we're about to do, is called trust and believe. This is another one of these exercises that I feel so, so important as it pertains to building muscle memory. You have to, all right, Finesse, do you trust and believe? I mean, do you really trust and believe that as long as you have power going to your rear wheel, 
everything's going to be all right. For the most part. That's what Finesse said. I'm glad he said for the most part and not just yes, because when we were doing exercise number two, when Finesse felt uh-oh, he put his foot down. That shows me he doesn't really trust and believe that if there's power, everything's going to be okay. Because when you trust and believe that, you know that this is the answer. Opening your hand is the answer because you're already preloaded. Putting your foot down is never the answer. That's an instinct that we're trying to fight, and we are going to win that battle eventually. Jeff, how about you? You trust and believe that as long as you have power going to the rear wheel, it's going to work out? Pretty much. Okay. Justin? So I, I, I'll say yes, but <laughs> it's blind trust, it's blind faith. You know? It's blind faith. Yeah, I don't have experience with it. Yet. Please elaborate. What does that mean, blind faith? So you're telling me so I believe it, but I have to do it and feel it. No, no, no. I don't want you to believe it because I'm telling you. I want. I just want to know if you trust it. If you don't, we're going to work on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Stacy? No. She doesn't. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> this exercise that we're about to do, it's going to force you to trust and believe that everything's going to be okay. Now, this is not an exercise that you're going to be doing um, in the middle of riding, but it does happen in the middle of riding. I'll get to that in a second. Because there's five steps in this exercise. Five steps. Finesse, what's always step number one? Finesse, what's always first step... Gear. Yes. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. Look at that. First, first. It's always the first step. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. All right. So, it's like a box on your motorcycle here. Five steps. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. Lower left. Step number two. Cover the rear brake. Go straight across. Step number three. Preload. Keep it loaded. They're up here. Step number four, clutch right before the sweet spot. They're over here. All right? Now, there's a reason for all of these steps. Again, we're making sure the motorcycle's in first gear because if you do this in the wrong gear, which I've done, almost didn't work out well. Step number two, cover the rear brake because we, we want to make sure we're in control. I'm going to demonstrate this exercise right in front of you. I'm not worried about running into you because I'm in control. Step number three, preload and keep it loaded. So important in this exercise. Step number four, your clutch is going to go right before the friction zone, before it. If you see the back of your motorcycle moving down and you're not moving, that means you're in the friction zone and you're, covering the, you're using the rear brake. I don't want you in the friction zone, right before it. And the reason you're right before it is, step number five, you're going to pick up your left foot. Remember, the right foot is already covering the brake. So the left foot's the only foot on the ground. Pick up your left foot, and as soon as you feel the motorcycle starting to fall, just open up your hand. Don't pop it open. Just open up your hand. You may not even have to open it all the way. Remember, being the boss means knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Now, somebody out here counted to almost five Mississippi. The motorcycle was all the way over. In that case, got to open the hand all the way up. It might even have to add some more throttle, right? It's important that you feel the motorcycle falling. So don't pick up your foot. Don't pick up your foot and then just open up your clutch. You, didn't, you never felt it. We have to, your brain has to register falling with this not this, okay? Now that's gonna take some time and it's fine, but I want you to realize that that simple exercise is gonna make it so that when you start moving, like when Stacy was starting to move, she would start like this. Because that speed, you don't feel comfortable. But if you trust and believe, as soon as it starts to move, put up. It doesn't matter how slow you're going. Rear brake, rear brake, rear brake, right? All right, make sure I'm in first gear. Cover the rear brake. Preload, keep it loaded. See the difference from that sound to this sound? One sound steady. That's how I need it. Clutch right before the sweet spot. Trust and believe. Pick up your foot. Don't let the motorcycle move an inch. That's it. It's nothing, it's nothing crazy or anything. It's that initial feeling of falling. There. It's like, oh crap. But we, as the more you practice this, you're going to learn, oh crap means do that. Not this. Don't do that. It's a 900 pound motorcycle or eight or seven. Whatever it is, this is not the answer. It's not a dirt bike, right? But even on a dirt bike, if, you're not, if this is how you ride, this is how you're going to ride every motorcycle you ride. That's why when you get these basic fundamentals down, 
I don't care what kind of motorcycle it is. You're going to know how to ride it, period, right? Um, now, there are certain situations when we get to exercise number four. Let me turn my motorcycle around. Exercise number four, we know is right turns and left turns from a stop. We also know that three things determine the radius of your turn. Your speed, how much you turn your handlebars, and how much you lean your motorcycle. So when we get over there, there's a white line there. I want you guys to put your wheel on that white line to make the turn from a stop. From that line, at that line, you can make that turn no problem. You don't have to lean. You don't have to turn the handlebars all the way. Nothing crazy. Now, if you move the motorcycle up a little bit, now you might have to turn the handlebars first, and then everything else is still the same. Make sure you're in first gear, cover the rear brake, preload and keep it loaded, clutch right before the sweet spot, slowly release the clutch to the friction zone, blah, blah, blah. If you go even more forward, now you're going to have to do exercise number three, but in a much higher scale. You got to turn the handlebars, let the motorcycle fall, and then clutch, catch it with the clutch. But my point is sometimes you could be riding your motorcycle and something comes up where you're trying to make a turn and you almost have to bring the motorcycle to a stop. For that, that little moment, you don't put your feet down, it's just giving you time to turn your handlebars, then you open the clutch back up. That's really exercise number three again. All right, anybody need to, need to see me do that again? No? Okay, good, that means you're eager to do it. Trust and believe, it's called that for a reason. All right, let's do it. Exercise number three, trust and believe. Do you guys trust and believe? If you don't, practice this and you will eventually. Now remember, everything we do, head and eyes, up. Don't look down at the dashboard. And we, we're like ballet dancers out here. Everything should be su subtle. You see people stop on their motorcycles and they're like, no. Like the last time we were doing this station and you stopped and I said, beautiful stop, because she put her foot down like this. Beautiful, control. All right. Let it out. Woo! Now he trusts and believes. Let's do it, Jeff. Got a little scary. It was a little scary. Don't move. Make sure it's not moving. Good. Head and eye straight ahead. All right, try it again. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Because even in that even in that case, when you're pulling up, if you ever feel like your motorcycle is gonna fall, it just means that you don't have any power going to the rear wheel. Okay. So that's why you use the rear brake and the power at the same time. Right. You're dragging the rear brake. Okay. Alright. Make sure you're in first gear, good, cover the rear brake, preload, keep it loaded. Clutch right before the speed spot. Make sure it's not moving. Pick up your foot. Let it out. Let it out. You hear the engine? Too low. Click, 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 click. All right, good. All right, I'm not sure that I trust this. So it's okay. Let's try this first. Okay. I'm going to be standing behind you, so the motorcycle, don't worry about it. Make sure you're in first gear. Of course you are, because I can see it. Covering the rear brake, good. Preload and keep it loaded. Give me some more preload. Good, keep it right there. Clutch, right before the sweet spot. No, 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 right before the sweet spot. Shouldn't be moving. Preload. Keep it right there. Don't move. Pull clutch in more. Pull clutch in. Pull clutch in. Shouldn't be moving. Remember, you don't move until you pick up your foot. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Give me more. Give me more throttle. More throttle. Keep it right there. No, don't move. Don't move. Keep it loaded right there. Pick up your foot. Pick up your foot. Pick it up. Oh, whoa. You going again?
All right, Finesse, that was good. It was scary because your throttle went down, but at the last minute, you picked it up. Keep it loaded, baby. Oh, again! Keep it loaded! Man, he's messing with me now because I, I was almost positive that I was going to shut off. All right, let's try it again. Head and eye, straight ahead. Look at my camera. All right, better. All right, good. Head and eyes. Look at my camera. Make sure that motorcycle doesn't move an inch until your foot is on that board. All right. All right, good stop. So remember, you're preloading your throttle, you're keeping it there, keep it at about 2,000. You're bringing your clutch right before the sweet spot, so you shouldn't be moving. And then you're just gonna pick up your foot while the motorcycle is stationary. And when you feel falling, just open up your hand. Make sure you keep it loaded. I'm holding your bike, so it's not going anywhere. Good, that's a good preload. Nope, you're in the friction zone, I feel the bike going down. Good. Pick up that foot, let the clutch out. Let the clutch out, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. All right. All right, make sure when you come to a stop, your handlebars are straight. All right, let's do it, man. You keep scaring me. But it looks good, man. Keep it loaded. That's what I'm talking about. And Jeff said it was cold out. I'm looking at his ankles. <laughs> All right. Now that time you let it move a little bit. Don't pick that foot up while it's not moving at all. Trust and believe, Jeff. Head and eyes. Look at my camera. There we go. There we go. Right, much better. This time I hear your throttle the whole time. That's why the motorcycle is so much more steady. All right. All right, it's your last time. Okay. Head and eye straight ahead. Trust and believe, Justin. Trust and believe. All right, it's coming. It takes practice. Finesse. Number four. Nice stop. Okay, so I, that time I didn't take my foot off the brake. You didn't take it off? You I should. Did not. You should. It's Keep it on the brake. So even when I completely release the clutch, my foot should still be on the brake until I go? Yeah, or you don't even have to completely release the clutch. You can stay in the friction zone. It all depends. The point is, because you don't need a lot of speed, you just need power. So keep your foot on that rear brake. You're, you're, actually, you're doing both at the same time. You're dragging the rear brake. Okay? That's what's giving you control. Holding the bike up, you're in the friction zone. Travel too low. Keep it loaded. 2000. Right there, keep it right there. Keep it there. Pick up your foot. Let the push, keep, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Alright. Alright, guys, we're gonna move on. Exercise number four, right turns and left turns from a stop. Alright, guys, good job on exercise number three. Finesse, really good. But remember, Watch your throttles. Keep, that's what I mean when I say keep it loaded. This is another reason why I think it's very advantageous that these things are recorded. And then when people come and do private lessons with me, I, I started offering that as an extra perk. Because when you're out there and you're trying to concentrate, even if I'm yelling something, 
it's not getting through because you're, you're blocked because you're concentrating. But when you can go back, look at it from a different vantage point, when your mind is calm, it all, it's, you know, it starts to come together. So, um, keep it loaded. Listen to those throttles. I know it happens. You start concentrating on, especially that exercise. It's like, oh crap, oh crap. As soon as you pick your foot up, that throttle goes down. Now, here's the other funny thing. Um, Justin, when Justin was approaching exercise number three, it's similar to this. As he's approaching the turn, I hear his throttle very low. And how does he, how is he, how is he making that turn? At the last minute when he's about to stop, he's like this. Why? Not enough power. Remember, use that rear brake and the, and the throttle at the same time when you're getting very slow. That's what's keeping it up. That's what's keeping it up. So that's why I tell you to cover the rear brake because there's going to be times when you're going very slow, you're still keeping it loaded, but you're going to be in the friction zone. You can't be coasting and using momentum at slow speeds, especially turning. Eventually, it's going to fall. It's the coin rolling across the table. Momentum will keep it up, and then it'll waver, and eventually it'll fall. That's your motorcycle without power to the rear wheel. So that brings us to exercise number four, right turns, left turns from a stop. Now, this exercise to me is so, so important. Now, believe it or not, with all the other crazy stuff we got out here that requires leaning and stuff, this doesn't require leaning at all, but this has the highest failure rate. Why? Because this exercise, speed is not going to help you. Right? It's not going to help you at all. This is where you have to be the boss of your motorcycle because we're right in that realm, 1 to 10 miles per hour. First time you guys go through here, I want you to just go straight through. And people usually don't, usually don't have a problem with that. When I ask you to stop and then do it from a stop, that's when people have that issue. But again, that's what we were talking about over there. If you trust and believe everything's going to be okay, now we're not doing trust and believe here. We're going to go over the steps. Eight steps in this exercise. Finesse, what's step number one in this exercise? What's always step number one? That's right. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. Jeff, step number two? Cover the rear brake. Cover the rear brake. Stacy, step number three? Justin, step number three? Preload. Preload and keep it loaded. Preload and keep it loaded. And guys, I give steps to everything because when you're, when you're out there riding and you're trying to figure stuff out, your brain races when you don't really know what to do. That's where the steps come from. And as you go on, the steps disappear because you just know how to implement them. Step number four, clutch right before the sweet spot. All right. Step number five, head and eyes. If you're making a left turn, head and eyes. Right turn, head and eyes. Okay. Step number six, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone while covering the rear brake. Okay, you're still covering that rear brake. Step number seven, as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, pick up your foot, as soon. There's no reason to do this. Trust and believe. I don't care if you run over a cone, just don't put your foot down. Now again, if you put your foot down, it's not the end of the world, we're learning, all right? This is gonna take time. Um, and then step number eight, turn your handlebars. That's this whole thing in a nutshell. Now, what I don't want you guys to do is I don't want you to lean in this exercise. I want you to keep the motorcycle straight up because that's showing that you have full control of that motorcycle. You're being the boss. If you lean in this turn, the only way you can do that, that means that you're implementing speed. Speed's gonna make you lean and feel comfortable because momentum is taking you around the turn. But I did a video on why it's important to be able to do this not leaning and the example was, traffic is going in this direction, but it stopped. And I need to get over here to make a turn. So the car is here. I can't, I have to look around, there's a truck here. I have to pull up here to look around to make sure I have it. And once I have it, I can't lean to make a turn because I'm a, my saddlebags are gonna hit the car, not enough space. So you have to be able to do this stuff straight up. Did you guys watch my video? from my Daytona when I'm riding through the vendors. You, I mean, any turn I'm making, I'm straight up. I can't, you can't be leaning because people are all over the place, all right? That's why this is relevant. Um, any questions? Okay, so the first time I go through this, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you. I'm just gonna ride straight through. The second time, I'm gonna stop right here. Now, if you don't feel comfortable stopping your motorcycle right here, this is seven and a half feet, by the way. Plenty of room, but that's, that's relative. If you don't feel comfortable stopping here, then stop up here, right? It's not a competition. And if you don't feel comfortable being centered, come over here, all right? Come over here and back here. 
Just concentrate on all the other steps. All I care about is that you can make the turn. Because the more you practice this, you're going to realize, I don't need to be back here, and I don't need to be over here. Right? The second time, I'm sorry, second time I want you to stop here. The third time I want you to stop here, make the turn, and stop here. The reason I had to implement that is because I noticed that people would make the turn, and then when they felt, oh crap, they would just open the throttle and hit these cones. Remember, I need you to be in control of your motorcycle at all times. Because when you make that turn, I need you to be able to stop if something's going on here, right? The goal for you guys is to make this turn and be in the center of this lane. That's the goal. If you're over here, it's not a big deal. But just keep in mind, as far as I'm concerned, this is a double yellow line. And even though your wheels might be here, your handlebars are over the double yellow line. And this is danger. The closer you get to this, is danger. It's traffic. So your goal is to be here. That's why we're going to do this straight up. Okay? All right. So let me go through it quickly. Now, of course, I always exaggerate going slow. You don't have to go that slow, but I don't want you to lean. Okay? All right. Now, I don't know if you're noticing it, but if you pay attention, when I make a turn, just like when I turned in here, you hear my throttle up the whole time until I stop. That's because I'm keeping power to that rear wheel while I'm using my rear brake at the same time. That's enabling me to keep that motorcycle steady, up, and until I'm straight, that's when I pull the clutch in, put my foot down nice and easy. All right, now we're going to do it from a stop. Make sure I'm in first gear. Cover the rear brake. Preload, keep it loaded. Watch right before the sweet spot. Head and eyes, look where I'm going to go. I'm going to slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. As soon as the motorcycle starts to move, this foot's coming up. Turn the handlebars. Straight up, no reason to lean. Now, can you lean going that slow? Yeah, you could. But that's just complicating things. Lastly, stop, stop. Brings me to my next point. Hmm? Yeah, it is. It's... Damn, Harley. All right. Make sure when you're stopping your motorcycle, you're stopping with your handlebars straight. Okay? Also, make sure that when you're putting your foot down, you're ready to stop. You know, when Jeff was stopping over here one time, he stopped, and the next thing you know, his foot was here, and then it ended up here, because he wasn't ready to stop yet. He felt, uh-oh. Remember, even at that slow speed, if you feel, uh-oh, the answer is friction zone, rear brake at the same time. 70% um, rear brake, 30% friction zone. You don't need a lot. You just want to stand it up a little bit to give you some stability. And notice where my motorcycle is, the middle of the lane. That's because I'm not going fast. See, speed is always going to take away space from you. If you introduce speed here, that's why you see sometimes people go like this, or they go like this, because they go, oh, crap. Speed is going to straighten out your handlebars all the time. Okay? Any questions? All right. Let's do it. All right, guys, exercise number four. Stacy says she's going to go back and practice exercises one and two, and that's what I love. That's what I love. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Head and eyes, look at my camera. You're looking at my cones. Don't molest my cones with your eyes. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. I want you to practice, when you finish doing that, at some point I want you to practice stopping goes. Yes, Meaning, what, what you're going to do, start, but I don't want you to go far 
where you can get momentum. Uh, almost like from this line to that line, not the second line, the third line. Start, stop, nice and easy. Okay? All right. Good, head and eyes. Keep it loaded, good, very good. All right, do it from a stop. What are you looking at? You don't gotta look at it, just listen. Look at my camera. Nice, Finesse, nice. If that's not trust and believe, I don't know what is. Now what Finesse is doing is he's doing exercise number three over here. He doesn't have to. So I'm gonna let him know about that. All right, you ready? Look at my camera. Look at my camera. You're not looking at my camera. All right, let's try it again. All right, nice stop, very nice stop. Now you see what happened there? As soon as you turned, you looked here. And that's where the motorcycle was going. Keep your eyes on the camera, keep it loaded. Don't worry about it, trust and believe. Everything's gonna work out. Keep it loaded. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. There we go, we're working it out. Okay, so you're actually doing exercise number three here. That's why it's making it look so difficult. You're picking up your foot before it moves. It's impressive, but it's not necessary, remember. That's only relevant for that because that's a training exercise for your brain. But in here, step number seven is slowly release. I mean, as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, then pick up your foot. So when you you're not picking up your foot until you actually feel it starting to move. Yeah. All right. There we go. Now remember when you pick up your foot. Yeah, but not only that, sometimes if you pick it up, even if you push it a little bit, it's going to throw you off balance. So just pick it up. Don't push off. Beautiful. Woo! Right in the middle of the lane. Oh, that was beautiful. Right in the middle of the lane. All right, Jeff, show them how it's done, man. Stop looking at my cones. Get those eyes up. <laughs> Still looking at my cones. Nice and easy. There we go. Very nice. All right. Stop looking at my cones. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Dude, that was perfect. You were right in the middle of that lane. All right, this time do that, come to a stop over here. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Very nice, very nice. Oh man, very nice. I don't care, listen. That was nice, man. That, that's not, that end part is not important. Do it, do it again.
Nice. You didn't look at that camera once. Nope. My less than my cones, but your eyes. All right. All right, you got this. Make sure you keep it loaded. Good, don't look down, you're looking down. All right, let's try it again. All right, just your last one and then right turn straight through. I mean, very nice, man. Very nice. It's excellent. And why am I saying it's excellent? He popped the clutch out and didn't panic. Never, he didn't put his feet out, nothing like that. Trust and believe. Keep looking over here. Good, 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 good. Oh, much better. Woo! What a difference it makes when you're looking where you're supposed to be looking. All right, remember, don't put that foot down until you're ready to stop. All right, last time, turn and then stop. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Give me some more. Give me some more. Throttle's too low. It's too low. I'm dragging my cone. Okay. Jeff, straight through. Straight through. Straight through, straight through. Very nice finesse, wow. Very nice. Look where he ends up. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Excellent, Jeff, excellent. Control, control. Doesn't it look good when you're in control? I know it feels good. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Nice. Come to a stop. Keep it loaded, 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 good. Keep it loaded, good, good. Very nice. Right in the middle. All right, Jeff, the bandit. Head and eyes. Very nice, very nice. Head and eyes, look at the camera. Make sure you get that throttle up. Keep it loaded. Excellent, excellent. That's what I'm talking about. Nice and controlled. Stop, stop. Yeah, you can do it again. Excellent. Man, those tabs sound good. And a nice. Just excellent, Jeff. Just excellent.
Excellent, Justin. Excellent. Woo! All right, last time for this. All right, make sure those handlebars are straight when you stop. Go over if you want to get something to drink, where we started. Just outstanding. Go get something to drink in the cooler. Justin is looking really good, man. Just, I mean, you can already see it, see it coming together. Doesn't matter. Excellent. Excellent. Focus on the drink, man. All right, guys, we're going to move on to exercise number five, single serpentine. Oh, already see the differences. Outstanding. All right, before I even start talking about this exercise, have you been practicing? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. You look like a totally different rider from the last time you were here. So, in one turn, Finesse popped his clutch. Did you see that? He was like, Arr! and when he came and stopped, I said, excellent. And you might be like, what do you mean excellent? You didn't see him pop his clutch? I saw him pop his clutch, but remember, we practiced for uh-oh. So that was an uh-oh moment for him. His feet didn't come off the board. That's a trust and believe moment. He knew that as long as I had power to the rear wheel, I was okay. And he was on that rear brake. So yeah, he popped the clutch, it, it, it put his speed forward, but because his foot is already covering that rear brake, it's already where it needs to be. He applied pressure, straightened out his handlebars, stayed within the, the exercise. Excellent. Excellent. Justin, I don't know where the epiphany happened, but I know what happened. He started keeping it loaded and at the same time applying that rear brake. And now his turn, way smooth. Now at the end of it, he's like... <sighs> <laughs> But you would, I couldn't tell by looking at him doing it that, that's why I always say to people, you might look one way, but your BPM says something totally different, right? <laughs> but great job, all of you, all of you. And Stacy, excellent job. Like I said, no pressure here. So she went over here, she practiced uh, exercise one and two again, some stop and goes, always good stuff to practice. And now we're gonna do exercise number five, single serpentine. An exercise that I used to think was just fun because you get to do this, but it's actually very important very important because you need to be able to do evasive maneuvers on your motorcycle. Remember, when we're riding at a certain speed, we turn our handlebars like this. That's how we turn the motorcycle, we just push. When you slow down, like in this exercise, now this exercise you're gonna have more speed, of course, than exercise number four, because here, now I want you to lean. I want you to lean the motorcycle, dip it, dive it, swing it, sway it, while keeping your head and your eyes straight ahead. You keep hearing me say head and eyes. It's so important because it helps your balance. So, yes, it's important turning, but it's also important when you're going straight. You look down. Try to balance a pole on your hand looking down at the pole like this versus looking at the top of it. And you're going to see the difference. You balance better with your head and your eyes up, okay? In this exercise, these cones are 15 feet apart, so it's plenty of space. But sometimes people see all that space and they want to go fast. Remember, speed's not your friend out here. Speed's gonna straighten out your handlebars, so it's not gonna allow you to dip it and dive it. And speed also makes you have to react to things quicker. So we don't want that. We wanna be controlled the whole time. See where my motorcycle is? These cones are straight up the line. Then you have a line over here and a line over here. I want you to go out wide. Don't hug the cones. People will come down hugging them like this. Treat these cones like poles. If your saddlebag goes over this, you hit it, even if you didn't hit it. Give yourself some room to go around it. Also, I want you to be closer to this cone than that cone when you start. Because if you start all the way up here, it's gonna catch you when you go down there. Not impossible, you just gotta slow down and lean more. You can still do it, but I'm in the business of working smarter, not harder. Start close here, head and eye straight ahead. You should already be starting your next turn before you get to this cone. That way you're not so far from it. So I'm playing the middle is good, all right? Dip it and dive it, swing it and sway it. Watch your speed. Again, 
You can use the rear brake when you need it. You don't have to stay on it the whole time, or you could stay on it the whole time. It's totally up to you. However you can do it to make it work. Listen to your throttle. Yes, you do have momentum in this exercise, but if I hear your throttle's too low, I'm still gonna say throttle, because you need to keep it at a certain level because I want you to be accustomed to always doing that. All right, I'm gonna run through it. my throttle the whole time it's steady I'm accustomed now to that sound and I'm concentrating believe it or not I'm not concentrating so much on what I'm doing with my handlebars I'm concentrating on that sound because what I'm doing with my handlebars none of that's going to be an issue but if I don't have enough power that could be an issue all right any questions all right um finesse is going to start but you guys are going to be coming toward me so don't start the way I went because I want you looking right at me the whole time there's a lot of molestation of my cones over there in exercise number four. Jeff, Justin, just to, they're young and impressionable. Look how small these cones are. Don't stare at them. I gave Finesse the thumbs up. He's like, screw you. I'm waiting for everybody to get out of the way. All right. It's only the first time. It's only the first time. Jeff and Stacy having a debate on who's going to go next. <laughs> Head and eye straight ahead. Ah, he's looking at my cones. It's okay. First time. Don't think I don't see your eyes looking at my cones. <laughs> the dog glasses don't matter. I can tell when you're looking at my cones. I don't need to see your eyes. I can tell by the way your motorcycle's moving if you're looking straight ahead or if you're looking at the cones. Right here, he's looking at that first cone. Now he's looking at the next cone. Now he's looking at the next cone. <laughs> so yeah, he's every cone. And see, he's hugging the cones. All right, you got a cone down. Make sure you pick up that cone. It's a black mark on the ground. Okay. And I need you to swing out some more. Okay, okay swing out some more. Right. And you're looking at every single cone. Straight ahead. All right, here comes Stacy. Good, see? See how she starts out? I knew she wasn't gonna have a problem with this. All right, see, you gotta keep it loaded. So, tell me what you think the problem is before I tell you what it is. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Stacey. When you first started, that first swing, I, and I said to the camera, I knew she wasn't going to have a problem with this. The only issue is you're not covering the rear brake. That's why you miss those other cones. You're going too fast. Okay. Cover that rear brake so that it ensures you don't go too fast. Okay? All right, let's try it again. Looking good. Stacy wants to be hard on herself, but I'm not going to let her. She said everything was wrong. Absolutely not. From the start, she looked really good. Wasn't covering the rear brake. And right here, Finesse started out a little fast, but he slowed down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Now see, what's going on here, what I notice happens a lot in this exercise is people wanna, nice and easy, nice and easy. Started out a little fast. People wanna do this and they wanna dip and dive and swing and sway. They wanna do it fast. And right there, Finesse started out fast. And then when he slowed down, he slowed down too much. <laughs> If you start out slow and just stay at that speed, you're good. Very nice. Jeff is looking like he's in control. Very good. Now right there, I saw Justin start. Left foot down, up nice and easy. Control. He wasn't starting like that when we first got here. And again, that's the goal. You want to leave here better than you got here. Good. 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 Better. Better. Much better. All right, here comes Stacy. 
She whipping that thing around too. Good. So much speed right there. So she's right on top of that cone. Keep going. Don't worry about it. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Just put that cone back where you knocked it from, and we'll talk about what happened. All right, so what happened there, Stacy? When you first pulled in, too much speed, and it put you right on top of the cone in front of you. Remember I said if you're too close to that cone, it's gonna catch you, like it just caught uh, Finesse. Finesse, tell me what's happening. RPM. What about him? Is that why you're not making those turns? Right from the start. Yeah. You're doing just like Stacy did. That first that first set of cones, you're going in hot. Then what you did last time is you slowed down. That was good. You slowed down too much. Yeah. All right? Split the difference. Yeah. All right, let's do it again. You got this, Stacy. No part of me thinks you don't have this. Good. See, he was going fast and he slowed down. That's that rear brake. Excellent job, Jeff. Jeff even put the gold, the, the bar and shield in gold on the back of his helmet. That's the theme of that motorcycle, black and gold. Good. You don't want to go too slow. Much better. Much better. See guys, this is why we practice. This is why I tell people, you know what, kind of try to kind of try everything. Because you might not be good at one thing and for whatever reason be good at the next thing. There we go. There we go. It's supposed to be windy today. I already feel it starting. that rear brake Stacy good keep going good all right too much speed started out good but too much speed at the end okay it's only three of them do you mind do I mind what if I try it on your bike no absolutely not well I can't say absolutely I don't know I've heard these Indians are fickle Good, I can hear his preload from here. That's what it's all about. We do the same thing the same way all the time. Nope, see he's hitting cones because he's not going out wide. Okay, he picked it up at the end, very good. Got one cone down. And guys, you might think, wow, this exercise is easy. What's the issue? Yeah, it's easier said than done. You know, once you once you have the technique and everything down, down, then yeah, everything's easy. Everything's easy when you know how to do it. See, a lot of speed there, but he slowed down. Keep it loaded, baby. Good recovery, good recovery, because he started out fast. That's why we keep our foot on that rear brake, because sometimes you're going to be going faster than you think you should be going. And when that happens, that's what that rear brake is for. Control. It's going to slow you down so that you have control. All right, that's it for you. You're good. All right, Stacy, you got this. Good start. Oh, whoa. Good. Swing it out, swing it out, swing it out. So Justin is doing this straight up when I need you to incorporate lean. Keep 
it loaded. And that's what happened with Stacy when she went to make this turn. She didn't have it loaded. That motorcycle almost went over. All right, it's another 10 push-ups. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you see where you're starting? I want you to start out there next time you do it. All right, I'm going to walk with you while we do this. I'm going to walk with you while we do this. All right, stop. So as soon as you start, you're starting too fast. And that's why you see where you are? You're, remember, I told you you want to be as far away from this corner as possible. You're right on top of it. So now... That's just going to get tighter and tighter. So, start over. Because remember, speed is taking away space, so we can't go too fast. Justin is trying to do it straight up. That's why he's hitting cones. He's too close to the cones. Needs you to lean, swing and sway. You ready? Take off nice and easy. All right, turn, turn. Good. Turn. Rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Your throttle's too low. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. All right. All right, guys, we're going to move on to exercise number six, the infamous U-turn. And uh, I'm pretty sure Stacy's not going to have a problem with it. Oh, she's going to go again. Keep it loaded! All right, too much speed. You got to keep that throttle loaded. It's very low. This single serpentine, this is what I mean when I say a lot of people think. Another thing is, I see it. You guys want to get in that exercise and go like this. That's what you want to do. And I see that you want to do it the way you start. When really, remember, we're doing slow speed move maneuvers here. We want I want you to be in total control for the most part. Yes, in this exercise, you're going to have some momentum. But I don't want you to go so fast that you, you're letting momentum take over. And now you can't even make the turns. Because remember, motor officer specification for this is 12 feet. This is 15 feet, right? 15 feet is plenty of space if you do it at a slower speed, okay? But Stacy, I'm glad that you asked everybody. So you guys didn't see that, but off camera, what Stacy did was she just asked everybody else to explain to her the concept of preloading because it wasn't, it's not, it's not clicking with her in her head exactly what to do. When really, all it is is, like even Stacy, when I say, bring your RPMs up to 2,000, you'll do it. And as soon as I walk away, I hear it go back down. <laughs> it's almost like you don't want to keep it there. Just keep it there. I should hear a smooth, elevated sound coming from your engine. Elevated, not too high, elevated, not idle. So we got to kind of split the difference in what we're doing. So we're going to talk about this in this exercise. This is exercise number 60, infamous U-turn. Um, and when I say we're going to talk about it, what I'm referring to is my RPMs. You're going to hear my throttle the same way as I'm riding up and through the U-turn until I'm done with it. It's going to stay that way. Now, remember, we're not robots, so there's always going to be fluctuations. But that's why I prefer your RPMs be a little bit higher than lower. If they're high and they fluctuate down, you're still good in a turn. If they're low and they fluctuate down, you might not be so good, right? Okay, this is 27 feet wide. Now, Stacy, I've already seen you can make a U-turn in this dimension. You did it over there. I was paying attention. Okay. Um, for, if anybody wants to, if anybody's offended by 27 feet, they think it's too wide, then here's the 18 foot box. If you want to make a U-turn in here, you can do it in here. No pressure. I just put it there because I know some people like to add a little something, something. Remember, when you're approaching this, Hey, Justin, what are we turning first? Our head and our eyes or our handlebars? That's right. Head and eyes. Speaking of that, Jeff, Justin, just, just complete annihilation of all of my cones with your eyes on that single serpentine. As a matter of fact, 
one point, Jeff said, screw you, Robert. He looked at every single cone and gave each of them a name. John, Sue, Bill. <laughs> so, guys, and again, I understand it doesn't feel natural to not look like this. We don't drive our cars like this, but when you get on a motorcycle, because balance is required, people want to look down when really looking up is going to help you, okay? So it's head and eyes and handlebars when you're turning. Even more important in a U-turn. Yeah, we want to be able to turn our handlebars. That's why we turn our head and eyes. But more importantly, we want to see what the hell's going on before we commit to the turn, right? So don't look and then go, okay, that's good. And now do this because stuff happens fast out there. Head and eyes, handlebars. Keep looking the whole time. Be consistent with your head and your eyes. Look at my camera. Keep looking at it. There's nothing, this is a controlled environment. There's nothing for you to hit. So don't worry about it. And even if you say to yourself, nothing for me to hit. Yeah, your eyes are still going to look over there. It just happens, right? But that's why we practice. I also want you to keep your handlebars turned consistently. If you're turning like this, you're losing space. Again, there's plenty of room in here, and this is not a competition. But steady. Everything we do is steady. It should look smooth. Fluidity. That's what I want. So when you make that turn, we don't have to lean a lot in here. We don't have to fully lock our handlebars in here. I don't want you to make this U-turn with a lot of momentum, speed. I want you to be in control. So head and eyes. Now it's not head and eyes and handlebars at the same time either. It's head and eyes, handlebars, okay? All right, and whatever we do on the left, we're gonna do on the right. First time, you guys are just gonna go right through, make a left U-turn. Then when I tell you, you're gonna stop right here. and make a U-turn. Then when I tell you, you're gonna stop here, make a U-turn, stop here. I want you to be in control all the time. Any questions? All right, I'm just gonna run through it. Listen to my throttle. And then at some point, I'm gonna make a U-turn in this 18-foot box. Nothing is gonna change about my throttle. The only thing that changes is how much I'm leaning and how much I'm turning the handlebars. The throttle is always the same. So you focus on that, Stacy. I guarantee you, throttle and then using that rear brake to control your speed, everything else will come together. But you got to trust and believe. That helps too. on that side. Listen to my throttle. It's the same, right? It stays the same the whole time. The only thing keeping the motorcycle up is the power going to the rear wheel. I'm using the rear brake. Definitely if I'm if I'm doing something in a circle that small, I'm trying to say within 18 feet, I'm on the rear brake that whole time. I have to be. Because when the motorcycle's leaned over that much, there's not too much of this going on with this clutch. I got to keep that power steady, and I'm just dragging the rear brake to control my speed. Because if I go a little bit too fast, it's going to push me out wide, and I'm not going to make that turn. All right? But again, none of that's relevant for you guys because this is not necessary, but it's still relevant. Okay. Any questions? All right. Good, head and eyes. Excellent, see what I mean? His clutch, his clutch pops, but he doesn't panic. That's why we practice, we practice follow. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Very nice, slow and controlled. Good head and eyes. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded! That was perfect. Head and eyes, beautiful. But as soon as you got right there, 
no more preload. Because the only way you're going to feel falling is when there's no power. Keep it loaded, Stacy. Try it again. She was looking really good there. But what happens often is, like I said, we start concentrating so much on the turn, we forget about the preload when the preload is more important than the turn. All right, I see that you're reluctant to lean. Give me some lean. All right. Justin wants to do this stuff straight up, which you can do. There we go. So if you have an extreme phobia of the feeling of falling and you don't want to lean the motorcycle, yes, you can do this without leaning. And I did a video on that. Very nice. Let's go straight through, don't stop. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Woo! You're scaring the crap out of me with that foot going back there. Do it again, you're not going home till you get this. Okay. Keep it loaded. Cause she's got it, as soon as she gets right here, the preload goes out. And if the preload goes out, the feeling of falling comes in. Good, lean it, lean it, good, 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 good. Keep it tight up. You looked away. <laughs> I mean, he was doing excellent. And then for some reason, he looked down at this cone and then he hit it. But his, his, his throttle was steady. His head and his eyes were good and then he looked away. Head and eyes, look at my look at my camera. And Jeff is showing you right here that you can do this straight up. Good job. But I'm gonna ask him to lean next time he comes in. Keep it loaded, good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, get that foot up! And what do you, what, what do we do if we feel like it's going to fall? I need to, I need to release the clutch. Yes, yeah. release yes. it, but not too much. I get it. And rear brake. Go ahead, do it again. So I'm going to do it the way I just do it, and just see. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Stacy says she's going to do it just the way she does it. I don't know what that means, but I don't care. You do whatever works for you. Whatever works, because we all are different. There's a million ways to do everything. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Look at my camera. Ah. So as soon as Jeff gets right here on this turn, he doesn't like the way that feels. And then he gets out of the lean and straightens out the handlebars. It can't be put down more gentle than that. Keep it loaded, baby. All right, now Stacy's gonna do it her way, she said. Let's see. Okay. So, that was nothing that taught me. That's a momentum U-turn. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So that's what I've always done. And the reason why we want to get away from that is, if something happens, the motorcycle is just going to drop. Right. I want you to make that U-turn controlled. That's momentum. Right. Okay, with speed. So if you were trying to say, hey, maybe I want to tighten that U-turn up, never going to happen doing it like that. Yep. Okay? All right. And the reason we don't want to rely on that kind of U-turn is because sometimes you want to make a U-turn and speed is definitely not going to be uh, prudent for the location where you're doing that. It's going to make stuff more dangerous. 
Just straight through. Jeff, you know what I want you to do? I want you to make a left U-turn, but give me some lean. You're doing it straight up, which is fine, but I want to see you do, do it with a lean. Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. All right. Yeah, Justin is not liking this U-turn at this portion of the U-turn. Look at my camera. Look at my camera. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Good. Now, now in that U-turn, Finesse has a slight lean. Beautiful. Perfect. Let's go, Stacy. Here's the other thing. Shut it off. Justin! All right, both of you guys seem to be having kind of the same issue. When you start making this turn, about about over here, you don't you're, you're done with it. You don't feel comfortable about it. So one of the issues is you guys are turning like this. So you're right here, and you're still not even committing to the turn really. When what you need to do is head and eyes handlebars. So you're turning from here, not slight turning from here, right? That doesn't mean you have to do a full lock. But if you turn your head and eye slow, you're going to turn your handlebar slow. Now, if you're going slow, it doesn't matter. But if you're moving with some momentum, turning your handlebar slow, you're losing space. All right? So keep it loaded, head and eyes, handlebars. So you start your turn from here, not here. All right, try it again. And you try it again, too. You picking up what I'm putting down, Stacy? I am. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's what, we, that's what this is all about. All right, let's do it, Justin. Have a nice. Good. Keep it loaded. Turn those handlebars. Turn them. Turn them. All right, too much speed. Get that preload up. Keep it there. Keep it there. Too much speed, too much speed, good, good, good. There we go. Why you put that foot down? You're good. Do it, yeah, stop. Do it from, do it and stop. Let's do it from a stop. Beautiful. Head and eyes. Now you're all the way over there because that's where you're looking. All right. Good job.
go straight through. Good, 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 good. That's what I'm talking about. Have Stacy stay on the left because that was the best one she did last time. All right, do that again, Stacy. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes. Good. 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 All right. That's what I'm talking about. Look at me. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Nice. Excellent. All right, you're done. Head and eyes. There we go. Woo! Nice. Very nice. Head and eyes, good. Come to me. Preload, good. See, preload before you even move, you should hear it. Come to me, look at me. Look at me, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Money, baby, stop. Excellent. Nice stop, too. <laughs> Stacy said, no, no, no. <laughs> There we go, preload. Too much speed, too much speed. Nice! I don't care, I don't care. She introduced speed and then she used the rear brake to slow herself down. And even with that slowing down, she still wasn't gonna make that turn. So she leaned the motorcycle and that's why she made it. Again, three things are gonna determine the radius of your turn. And yeah, it gave her too much speed and she wound up coming this way and I don't care. We're knocking down dominoes, baby. All right, exercise number seven, the figure eight, coming up. Okay, we got Finesse doing some push-ups off camera. He's a disciplined VI preloader. We got somebody else that owes me 30, yeah. <laughs> but no pressure. <laughs> Let me tell you something, guys. I always tell people, I usually watch everybody pull up when they first get here, and it tells me a lot about what I need to know about where they are as far as being comfortable on their motorcycle at slow speeds. And watching Justin come around here and park, this is what I mean. Something so simplistic, or at least it should be, it's so complicated. But when you know what you're doing, we're right back to the simplicity. The way he's parking that motorcycle and stopping looks way different than when he first got here today. And that's what this is all about. This is about leaving here. I don't care if it's a fraction better but just a little bit better, a little bit more confident, because then we're on the path to where we want to be, which is the boss of our motorcycle, right? Okay. Um, you, guys, you guys did very well on that U-turn. Stacy at the end, this is what I mean, starting to come together. And if you notice, what Stacy did was, that last U-turn, she came around and she was whipping it. She was going too fast. She used the rear brake, slowed herself down, but she was going so fast at first that just the rear brake wasn't going to be enough. And then at the end, she just let the motorcycle lean more. Let me tell you something. That's what I mean when I say she was before saying, I'm scared it's going to drop. Somebody that's really fearful, they're not even going to that step of, let me lean it over. But that's why she stayed in the exercise. Now, yeah, she's, she came all the way around and I, didn't, I don't care about that. Remember, we're knocking down dominoes. That, I hope that helped your confidence because... That's huge. Your bike is on. All right. Exercise number seven, the figure eight. Stacy, what I want you to do. No, no. Hear me out. All I want you to do, Stacy. <laughs> well, before I get to Stacy, what I want all of you guys to do is realize that this box is the same width as that U-turn. 27 feet long. It's four, I'm sorry. 27 feet wide. 46 feet long. Plenty of room in here but you need to use all of the space that's afforded to you, all right? Don't rip yourself off. For instance, if you come over here and start your turn here, it's gonna catch you over there unless you lean a lot. 
if you don't come all the way over here and use all of this space, then it's going to catch you over here. Again, unless you lean a lot. That's why I don't say use all the space you have. I don't say, I say use all the space you need because everybody's different. All right? When you guys come in here, come all the way to this corner. Head and eyes. Look at that first green cone. I know it's behind you. And I want you to hold the turn. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Use all the space that you need. Hold it. Don't let out the turn and go to the corner losing space. You're going to that green cone. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Head and eyes handlebars. Now you're looking at that cone. Just keep looking for it. You'll see it. Hold it. Now if you don't feel comfortable staring at that the whole time while you're going like this, that's fine. You can look over here, but eventually, I need you looking there, okay? Hold it, hold it, hold it, until you are fit. You shouldn't be facing like this. You should be facing like this. That's what your figure eight should look like. They should look like this. Not like this. That's taking up too much space. What I want you to do, Stacy, is come in here. Come over here. Head and eyes. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and go out that way. Don't worry about making another turn. I just want you to hold that turn, hold it, hold it. Hold. Shit, you did it over there. Now that I'm thinking about it, when you went through those cones, you actually already did this. Only difference is you're not coming from here. You're coming from over here, but nothing else changes. It's the same with, don't let it get in your head that it's something different. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and then go out that way, all right? Okay, so once again, my throttle, by the way, your, 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 your preload, much better, Stacy, much better. Like at, at first she was pulling in and I'm like, I don't hear it. Remember, as I'm approaching, I'm already there. When we did the stop and then make the right U-turn, Justin, RPMs up before he moves. That's preload and keep it loaded. It should be up before you move. So good job with that. Listen to my throttle, same, or at least trying to keep it the same. And even when I take it down to motor officer specifications, the throttle doesn't change. Head and eyes, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Head and eyes, hold it. Hold it. Use all the space that you need. Hold it. Transition. Any questions? Stacy said, no, no, no. At the, end of, at the end of the day, this is about building your confidence up. So I don't want you to do something that's going to knock it down. All right, Finesse. All right, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Head and eyes. Look at me. Transition. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes. Transition. Head and eyes. Good. Look at me. Come to me. Come to me. Transition. Look at the exit. You're good. Look at the exit. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Look at the exit. <laughs> Do the same thing, make the turn and go out that way. Stop, stop, stop. I'm sorry. See where you are? You're making the turn from right here. So you're giving up all that space. You need to come all the way over here. 
All right, try it again. Start over. That clutch is that clutch is killing you today. I got it, I got it. Alright, Jeff is looking good, bike sounding good. Like I always say, I don't care how your bike sounds, I don't care how it looks. If you don't really know how to ride it, none of that matters. Because you look better, your bike looks better, and it seems to sound better. It seems to sound better when you just are the boss of it. At least to me it does. I can't give Jeff credit for that, he's supposed to go through it twice. <laughs> Hey Jeff, I can't give you credit. You're supposed to go through twice. <laughs> Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Go straight out. Nice. So Justin's head and eyes are just excellent now. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Good, keep it loaded. Sure, go ahead. Do it the other way if you want to do it the other way. That's fine. You can do it better than that, this is excellent. Okay, so what both of you are doing that I'm noticing, you're coming in here, I notice the slow speed uh, riding, you're actually going too slow. So give yourself a little bit more speed, especially on that initial turn. A little bit more speed so that you can kind of make that turn easier okay all right but Justin your head and your eyes are just oh just way better than when you first got here and this is why you didn't have any issue making that first turn now if you feel comfortable going into another turn by all means but if not just hold it hold it hold it and go straight out all right actually actually see if you can hold it and go straight out like right here instead of over there Stacy over there working in the U-turn box. I love to see that, man, because that's what this is all about. I'm availing cones, and the location I'm not availing is not mine, but come out here and use it. Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Good. Good. All right. Next time he does that, I want him to hold it a little bit longer. What I'm trying to do is get him comfortable holding that turn, holding that turn. When we get to the snowman, that's where it's going to be relevant. Good. Keep that speed right there. Reload. Oh, good, good. Keep it loaded. All right, a little too much speed. Now you're wide. Jeff, you're going the other way, I thought. I thought you were going the other way. Very nice. 
Jeff has the tip of his toes on that rear brake. And that's going to assure him that he's not going to apply too much rear brake. Just a little bit. Alright, good. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I think I messed you up. I cut the turn short. Yeah. Next time you do it, make that turn. I want you to hold it. Hold, I'm going I'm to keep saying hold it. Just hold the turn. Stacy getting it in over there. Good. Hold it. Hold it. Rear brake. Rear brake. Rear brake. Rear brake. Good, transition. Hold it, hold it, hold it. All right. Come on, Justin. It's a wheel right there. All right, head and eye, hold it. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Nice. All right, that's all I needed to see him do. Now we can move on to exercise number eight, the offset double serpentine. Ah. Stacy getting it in. All right, guys, good job over there. Justin, the reason I wanted to see that, I wanted to see you hold that turn and hold it, hold it. Show me that you're comfortable keeping the handlebars turned which you look very good at that. That whole hold it thing is relevant in this exercise and definitely in the next exercise. All right, this is exercise number eight, offset double serpentine. So, notice how my motorcycle's facing. I know the camera can't see it, but if the gate's here, my motorcycle's not facing the gate like this, it's facing the gate like this. Because when you come through this gate, guys, I don't want you to go right to this gate. I don't want you to go straight over here. Because if you do this, this is a hell of a turn. Of course, it's not impossible, but it's more work. You gotta lean the motorcycle a lot more. This is all about transitions. Now, in the past exercise that we just did, the figure eight, that's transition. Go over here, transition. Here, the transitions aren't as quick, but at the same time, they kinda are. But you have more room to work with, so it feels more comfortable. So when you guys come through here, immediately, I want you to come over here, all right? Head and eyes. Jeff is ignoring me when I say that, because he's like, screw that. Head and eyes, I want you to look at that. Don't commit to it early, right? Don't, <laughs> don't commit to it early. When you get about right here, head and eyes, handlebars. Now the goal is not to pass the outside lines. But like I said, this is not a competition, right? Head and eyes, handlebars. So now when you reach this gate, you're going through the gate like this, rather, rather than like this. So it's preparing you for the next turn. When you reach this gate, head and eyes, look at the gate you came from. Hold it, hold it, there's that word again. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition, head and eyes, handlebars. See how far away I am now? So now I have room, I don't have to lean like crazy, and I'm still approaching like this. What happens is people come through here, almost like the single serpentine, if you start it wrong, it's gonna catch you. They come through here, and they, they're too close to this. So now this turn is so wide, they actually approach this gate like this. Again, not impossible, but more work. So you're always looking at the gate you came from. As you're coming through here, head and eyes, look where you came from. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition, head and eyes, handlebars, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna run through it that way. And then when I come back, I'm gonna go straight for the gate to show you, yeah, it's possible, but it's just more work. Head and eyes right there, transition. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, transition. Hold it, hold it, hold it, transition. Hold it, hold it, hold it, transition.
way more work the second way, right? Again, this is all about being one with your motorcycle fluidity. Finesse, show them how it's done. Oh, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll be, standing, I'll be standing here and I'll say, all right, come to me, Finesse. And he'll come in and start to come to me and say, all right, that's enough of you. And just go straight here. Keep coming towards me until I tell you to turn. I want you to be nice and wide with these turns. Come on, come on, come on. All right. That a nice. Look where you came from. Uh oh. Next. <laughs> We got Jeff here. Good. Very good, very good. Jeff's been practicing. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. All right, it went a little wide on that one. It's only the first time through. Oh, he shut it down. We got Justin coming now. All right, he didn't come out wide enough. Justin is doing this straight up. See, that's not going to work. It's not impossible, but... Good. There we go. Keep it loaded. Now, he went straight for that gate. So, Justin. Justin, this next time you got to come out more to the right, Justin. Justin. Talking to him. Nice, Jeff. See that? Gotta go on. Nice. Now, he didn't go out too wide on the second one. So now the rest of these are gonna be tight. Hey, Jeff! Jeff! Okay, so what happened there is. This first one, beautiful, nice and wide. But when you came over here, yeah, you kind of went right to it. Jeff knows, you know, this is what I mean when I say when somebody's at a certain skill level, all you have to do is tell them a couple of things and they'll put the rest together. So before I can even finish the sentence, he said too narrow, so he knows. And once again, Justin didn't come over enough. So now he's approaching this, like at a 90 degree angle. So now everything else after this is tight. Like he's actually passed the next turn, so it's not gonna happen. There we go. You have to lean the motorcycle here to make it easier for you. You don't have to, okay. Let me talk to them. Finesse! Finesse! All right, so Justin, you're doing the same thing. You're, you're, you're coming over. You're making your turn from right here when you need to be all the way over here. The other thing is, um, this is an exercise where you have to lean the motorcycle to make it easier for you. Justin, you're kind of doing this straight up. And Jeff, you're kind of straight up too. Leaning that motorcycle, that's where the fluidity comes in. You, you go, transition, lean. Hold it, hold it, hold it, transition, hold it. You don't have to lean a lot, but you have to lean more than you're leaning to make it easier. All right? All right, let's do it again, Jeff. Jeff is starting right, 
And then when he gets over here, he doesn't come all the way over here. Make sure you're always looping. Don't go straight to the gate. Right, good, stay with it. Just because you put your foot down, guys, doesn't mean you have to stop. Stay with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Work it out. Identify what's going on. Make the corrections next time you come through. All right, held that one too long, so probably going to go past it. No problem. But this is the furthest he's gotten so far. It's progress. Let me stand over here. Come on, come on, come on. All right. All right, Justin. All right, remember, if you turn your head slow, you're going to turn your handlebar slow. This is not, it's almost like the figure eight. You can't turn like this because you're losing space. So when you come through here, you come over here, head and eyes, handlebar, just turn them because you're, it, you're committing too late to the turn and that's what's bringing you out this wide. All right, let's try it again. Head and eyes, handlebars. Doesn't have to be excessive, but it can be this. Yeah, you may as well come back in, man. Come back in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Good. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Wow, that was that was a really tight that was a really tight turn. That was impressive. I'm gonna remember that for the snowman. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Like I said, sometimes you can actually be going too slow. See, he didn't come out enough on that, so he's going right to that next gate. Right here, the speed Jeff's going, well, that speed was good. But then right there, it's too slow. Very good, work it out. Last time for Justin. Good. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Oh, you missed that gate. Too much speed. Too fast. Remember, if you go fast, it's not only taking up space, but it's forcing you to make decisions quick. Didn't come out enough there. Again, not impossible. So he's approaching these cones at a 90 degree angle. 
All right. One more time. All right. All right, so let me show you guys something. Again, this is about, like I said, fluidity and being one with the motorcycle. So just now when Justin came through, Justin came through like this. Straight through. When really what you should do, I mean, it's not absolutely necessary, but it helps. You want to start getting your body ready before you even get into that. So when you get here, dip the motorcycle. Dip. Dip around this. It's going to make it easier for you to get into this turn. The whole point is to get you comfortable dipping and diving the motorcycle. That's what we did in the single serpentine. No, it would do. <laughs> I should have said that's the purpose of the single serpentine. Time. He was speeding in here. <laughs> Dip. Dip. See, now I'm already ready. Oh. Now I'm already ready because I'm, I'm I, the, mo the motorcycle's in the motion. All right, move on to the uh, to the uh, blah, blah, blah. snowman. All right, guys, we're gonna move on to exercise. We're gonna move on to exercise number nine, which is the abominable snowman. That whole hold it, hold it, hold it thing. Very relevant here. All right, guys, welcome to exercise number nine, the abominable snowman. Now, it doesn't have to be abominable for you. The 18-foot circle at the top makes it abominable. Disregard that circle, all right? The beauty of the snowman is that whole hold it thing, that's relevant here. So all the way from exercise number seven and eight, me yelling, hold it, hold it. Here, this is all you're doing. All of these exercises build on one another. I didn't just throw them together haphazardly, right? So when you guys come in here, the, here's the beauty of this. First circle is 27 feet, same as that U-turn, same but different. Second one, 25 feet. Third one, 22 feet. Last one, 18 feet. The beauty of this is you don't have to go any further than you want to go. So if you just want to make a 27-foot circle, Justin, and go back out, fine. If you say, ah, I want to try 25 feet, let's pull in here, right? What I will say is this. If a circle is tight for you, just like in this in this um, this uh, figure eight, use all of the space that you have. If you come over here and you start your turn right here, whatever this is, two feet, that's going to catch you over there, unless you lean the motorcycle. All right? If I see that you're not comfortable leaning the motorcycle, that's not an option. So bring your wheel all the way, like the nine o'clock position, right here and then hug these cones until you get to about 12 o'clock. Then you can kind of commit to the turn. Look at the exit. If you're gonna go further than this circle, as you finish this one, come to the next one. Same thing. Don't start the turn early. Bring your wheel about right here. Guys, you can see, I don't have this coned off where you're confined in here. Because I don't want you to, I want you to feel confinement, but I don't want you to feel claustrophobic either. There's escape routes. Even if the escape route is a cone, you can run over the cone, it's gonna be fine. Dropping your motorcycle out here is not a failure. It is part of the learning process because you know, that's why I asked you what happened. And she said, of course she beat herself up first. And then she said, not enough throttle, bingo. That's, the, that's always gonna be the case. So as long as you know why you did it, that's progress, that's you learning. It's lessening the odds of you repeating it. Notice I didn't say, you know now, so it's never gonna happen. Lessening the odds. Okay, so the reason I wanted you to join us over here um, is because this is a 27-foot circle. This, this uh, snowman, 27, 25, 22, 18. The beauty is you don't have to go any further than you want to. So, Stacy, if you want to come in here and just do the 27-foot U-turn and go back out, no problem at all. Well, now, all right, so, yes, that's why I said it's the same but different. Just like an 18-foot U-turn over there is not the same as an 18-foot U-turn here. Because in a square, it's only 18 feet from side to side. But in the circle, it's 18 feet all the way around. So in here, it's 27 feet all the way around. But 
like I was telling them, Stacy, I don't cone this in. If you guys saw my Christmas snowman that I did with with the Christmas music playing, I had that snow. I had to cone that all in, so it looks good from the drone. But here, you have plenty of space to escape or even hit a cone. Don't worry about it. So there's really nothing for you to be worried about in here. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna run through it. Again, only go as far as you want to go. If, like for instance, if Jeff says Jeff's right turns are better than his lefts. So Jeff should start this on the right side because if he goes up to 22 feet, that's going to be a right turn for him. Um, nobody's going to 18 feet, so no reason for me to discuss that. Um, the green cones are just showing you where the next gate is. So as you're making the U-turn, make sure you look at that and go that way. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Same thing I'm saying. Throttle, throttle, throttle. Preload, preload, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Listen to your engine. Notice we're saying the same over and over. This is not rocket science, it's the same thing. But repetition equals retention. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Head and eyes. Rear brake, rear brake. Bring your wheel all the way over, don't rip yourself off. So I notice a lot of you, a lot of you, used to, actually all of you, you resist the lean. Um, if you don't want to lean a lot, it doesn't make sense to keep going up there because it's just going to get tighter. So let's work it out at 27 feet. If you're ready, if you want to do 25, try 25. You can try it off for all I care. At the end of the day, if you can't do it, you can't do it. All right. Let's do it. started that really early. Let me move this camera up because nobody's doing this 18 feet. Started that early. Again, not a big deal in the bigger boxes. Alright, but then it'll catch you in the small box. So that's the only issue he had, and I'll let him know. Gotta lean. Jeff, the only problem you had, you started early over here. You started your turn right here. No big deal in 27 feet. You started early there. No big deal. But once you got there and you did it, all right. Good. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Good, head and eyes, look at the exit. Look at the exit, look at the exit, good, good. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Looking good, look at the exit. That's what I'm talking about, 
Power Bandit. That's a bandit. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. And when he was pulling out, he's, Jeff said, yeah, hit that throttle. I apologize to my VIP loaders that were there for this practice session. Uh, the battery on my phone died unbeknownst to me. But the good news is that uh, run that Jeff just did, we thought that I didn't get that and when I got home I realized I did get it so Jeff we all get to see how great that was and how happy you were especially with that celebratory throttle Good. keep it loaded keep it loaded keep it turned okay we won't be doing the maze I heard Justin say what's the maze that's the maze series of 18 foot u-turns two lefts and one right if you're on one side two rights and one left if you go the other way that's all it is quick transitions and they're not that quick so because we're not doing that we're gonna move on to Follow the leader. The rules of this are very simple. I'm the leader, do as I do. If you do anything other than I do, you're out. All right, but this is like a little league game. You're not out permanently. So just pull to the middle of the parking lot. We're gonna do a circle around you, one circle, and then jump onto the rear as we go, okay? So what are the things that get you out? If you hit a cone, you're out. If you put your foot down, you're out. If when we're on the concrete, you ride on the grass, you're out. Okay, if we're going to make a turn from a stop, and I am going to tell you, anytime I'm going to make a turn, I'm doing it from a stop. If you don't stop when it's your turn, if you just roll through it, you're out. If my wheels were here, and you say, screw that, I'm going to do it from over here, you're out. <laughs> okay? <laughs> now, at a certain point, we're going to leave the parking lot. If you do something out there, like put your foot down, ride on the grass, don't say I'm out and come back here. Don't leave us. Stay with us. <laughs> and now that's what Finesse did that last time. It's like, bye. <laughs> Stay with us, and when we get back here, you can pull into the middle of the parking lot. Okay, any questions? Now, all right, I'm going to let you know that I, at some point, I am going to, every now and then, I'm going to go really slow and try to get you to stomp on your brake. Not stomp on your brake. Try to get you to put your foot down. Okay? Now, I don't want you guys to be spaced way out either because I want to kind of have you in the frame of the camera. Okay? And then lastly, we're going to do the race over here. The slowest rider is the winner. Nice. Okay? All right. Um, any questions? All right, let me get geared up. All right, guys, let me apologize to you. Uh, first, you can see some scratches on the lens. I'm hoping that's a lens cover. I still haven't checked it, but I dropped the camera and scratches. So that's first. Secondly, I did not check the storage on the micro SD card and it ended up filling up before I finished follow the leader. So. I didn't get the full follow the leader. At least I got some of it. So for the part that I did get, enjoy guys.
never switch sides Like even when I die, I'ma ride for the squad Let up ties in the hearse I've been on a vibe kinda hard to describe I'm in between, I'm good and it's fine But I'm tired of the grind Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life I never so packed for the stack Never lied on the back Got a bag from the way that I write it Queen looking Tyson Do that I survived doing 80 to the house Then I hit it to the sky Change haters on a tirade Talking to the crib in the face Be still like that hate stuff fade We all want the same We all want a meal in the safe I wanna live like I'm trying to get lightning Trail spill from my lips Feel big from the bit Take a sip till I pass out Try and get grip but it don't make sense Cause you can lose life on this fast route Yeah, turn thoughts to a cash cow I might flip that to the glass house I don't need the accolades, I'm in love with the chase I just wanna eat, save a spot at the table Beast with the slap, hit myself on the map You long with the wind, but we knowin' that it's cap Five hour flights, couple nights at the flat To be real, couldn't see me making moves while I'm at I'm still on the grind, limit time when I chat I'm burning down sage, keep the demons away When I rally, give a piece of myself to the pain Right, if you guys don't know the rules, I'll go over them. The first one to the end is the loser. Okay? So, as you guys are going in here, you have to stay in your lane. If you go outside of your lane, you're out. If you put your foot down, you're out. That's pretty much the rules. All right? This is exercise number two at the extreme. That's all it is. All right? All right, mount up. I got pressure because I know this guy's got to get home. He promised his wife by lunchtime. <laughs> I'm looking at my clock the whole time I'm doing this. <laughs> Finesse, move up. Finesse, move up. Okay. 
I'm gonna count to three. Put my hand down, that's when you go. If you don't go, as soon as I do that, you're out. All right, one, two, three. Oh, that was quick. Oh, oh. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta do that all over. <laughs> because actually, Justin won. I started to say, once he put his foot down, Justin, you could have just rolled to the end. Because everybody else has already put their foot down. All right, good, good. Come up some more, Jeff. All right. That's too much. All right, that's good. Ready. One, two, three. Whoa, whoa. Jeff shot forward. Put down, put down. Finesse. All right, guys, Finesse got that one. I like this. I'm glad I added it. It's fun. Jeff, did you enjoy yourself? Absolutely. All right, good. Outstanding. Um, you remember what you rated yourself when you came in? I said a five. Any change in that number? Ah, you know, <laughs> left hand turns were kicking my tail. Okay. I might be a little bit lower than that. But okay. I've got to work on them. Yeah, and that happens. I always tell people when I say, is there any change in that number? Sometimes the change is down. Because if you don't practice this regularly, of course the number you give is not going to be accurate. That's why I don't rate people. I let you rate yourself. You come out here, do what you have to do. It's humbling out here. It really is. Um, and I'm going to ask all of you this question. I usually don't do this for everybody, but do, will you be back? Absolutely. Good. That's what I like to hear. Absolutely. Take advantage of what we have going on out here. Appreciate you, man. Thank Pass you. the mic over to Stacy, please. Stacy, did you have fun today? Yes, sir, I did. When you weren't beating yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember what you rated yourself when you first came out today? Was it like less than zero? No, I don't remember. Pretty sure I stayed about the same. <laughs> so I'm going to say no. no Again, right. I don't rate people, but I can't disagree with your number. Right. And you're clearly not the same as you were when you came. And that's what we want. Right. So forget about the number, but there definitely was improvement. And at the end of the day, it's all about raising your confidence. Because right. the more your confidence goes up, I say it at the end of every video, you're going to be a safer motorcycle rider, but you're also going to enjoy it so much more. Right. You really are. So yes, will you be back? Next Saturday? Or Sunday. I usually base or it on Sunday. the way. Oh, no. Next Saturday is the Global Group Ride. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So oh. definitely like to see you in that. And then Sunday is a practice session, April, April 13th. Okay. I won't be here. No, not April 13th. What am I talking about? Oh, April you, 3rd. You. Mm. Sorry. Thank yeah. You. Justin, did you enjoy yourself? I did. Okay. You remember what you rated yourself? I did. I was a two. Any change I think in that I'm number? like a solid 2.85 now. <laughs> okay, good. I did things today that I couldn't do before I showed up, so. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what this is all about. All about, awesome. Come over here, Finesse, because you're walking out of the frame now. Oh, my bad. <laughs> you can hand him the mic. Just keep him out of his way so he can do his thing. All right, did you enjoy yourself, sir? Of course. Okay, um, where'd you rate yourself when you first came today? Three. Any change in that? Uh, a more comfortable three. Okay, very good. That's the second time somebody said I'm more comfortable, whatever the number was. And will you be back if there's no honey-do list? Uh, definitely. Okay, good. Now, I, I, I do want to say I see, I saw improvements in all of you. And quite frankly, that's really the appeal to these videos. If I did a video with just me out there doing stuff, nobody wants to see that. But watching average riders start here and end here, you can clear, you can see the improvements right through the screen. And I know that you guys can feel it. That's really the most important thing. But I encourage you, watch the video, study what you're doing. I'm always talking while I'm recording, so listen to what I'm saying. And then the next time you come back, we'll apply that. Now, Stacy reminds me of, I forgot who it was, but they would come here and do exercise one, two, three, four, maybe, and that's it. And then the next few weeks later, then they would add on another one and another one. But in, in the meantime and in between time, they will also practice. And so what I'll say to you is, if you know that you struggle with your right, I'm sorry, with your left turns, make more left turns than you make right turns, right? And practicing doesn't always mean you have to set up cones. So when you leave your house, when I pull out of my driveway and come to the end of the curb and stop right there, that's exercise number four, I have to make a right turn or a left turn. That's practice every time you do it, but practice is a state of mind. If you tell yourself, all right, let me practice this. 
step number one, I mean, exercise number one. No, I was right. Step number one, step number two, blah, blah, blah. It, it, it counts. It's, it counts. It's going to build your confidence. It all goes in there. Appreciate all you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All right. All right, guys. Practice session number 40 in the books. Started out cool. Beautiful day out here right now. I had a great time with my, my neighbors. I can actually call these guys my neighbors. Preloaders and a VI pre, a preloader and VI preloaders. Just a great, great time. Um, right now, they're picking up the cones for me. I appreciate them for that. All right. And at the end of the day, everybody that's out here today, my neighbors, they feel better leaving here than when they got here. And that's what this is all about, guys. All right. So please, guys, understand the importance of what we're doing here. I'm glad. For, I'm very happy for those of you that do understand it and you're applying it. It's so, so important. Guys, if you like this video or any of the videos that I put out, please hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps me out. Hit the like button. And if you want to be notified when future videos that I make come out, hit that notification bell and switch it to all. Don't want to miss anything from here. A lot of good stuff coming from Preloader Nation. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Uh, spend more time being thankful for the things that you have and less time complaining about the things that you don't. I want to acknowledge my brothers and sisters in blue. Guys, please be careful out there. Know that you're appreciated. Special shout out to the elite NYPD Highway Patrol, particularly Highway 1 because that's where I worked, and the Highway District. That's where the motorcycle school is. That's what taught me how to ride my motorcycles the way I ride them. But like I said, guys, it doesn't end there. This is a perishable skill. When I say perishable, it could be a week or two and already you come back out here and it feels a little awkward. So stay on top of it, guys, mentally and physically. Watching the videos is great, but you have to go out and apply it. You have to practice. All right, guys? Seat time does not equal practice time, guys. And if you have time to ride, you have time to practice. Until next time, guys.